Hello friends, this video on how to organisms reproduce part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The following steps together constitute complete sexual reproduction in plants. Pollination, fertilization, seed formation and germination. So these four steps taken together complete the entire reproduction cycle in plants. So now we will discuss about each of these steps in detail one by one. So we will start with pollination. So let us see what is pollination. The word pollination looks like has been derived from the word pollen, right? It looks similar to poll pollen pollination, something like that. So what is pollination? It is transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma. Now for sexual reproduction to happen, the pollen grains should meet the egg, right? Now in order for the pollen grain to meet the egg, the pollen grain has to go to the female reproductive part. That is pollen grains will have to reach the carpel. So which part of the carpel pollen grain will reach? Stigma, right? So the pollen grains are present in the anther. So they have to move from anther to stigma. So this transfer of pollen grains is known as pollination. And that is the first step of sexual reproduction. Because first of all, the pollen grains will have to reach the female reproductive part. Now, there are two things that can happen. One possibility is that the pollen grains will move from anther to the stigma. That means from here to here of the same plant. This is the stigma and this is the anther. So this is anther and this is stigma. So one possibility is pollen grain will move from anther to stigma of the same flower. So that is known as self-pollination. Now another possibility is pollen grain will move from anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower. That is known as cross-pollination. So same pollination means same flower and cross-pollination means different flower. Clear? So now when I say self-pollination, the self-pollination is possible only for bisexual flowers. It is possible for bisexual flowers because bisexual flowers are the ones where we have both the male part and the female part in the same flower. So anther and stigma will be present in the same flower. But if it is unisexual flower in that case, you will not have both anther, anther and stigma in the same flower. So the self-pollination occurs mostly in bisexual flowers, whereas the cross-pollination occurs both in unisexual as well as bisexual flowers. So in unisexual flowers, since either anther or stigma will be there, so obviously there has to be cross-pollination. Now, in some bisexual flowers, sometimes it might happen that the anther and the stigma though both did not get matured at the same time. In that case, anther from this flower will get carried to, so the pollen grain from anther of this flower will get carried to the stigma of another flower. So that means we can say that cross-pollination is possible both in unisexual flowers as well as bisexual flowers. But when I talk about self-pollination, that is possible only for bisexual flowers. Clear? Okay. So now the question is, how will the pollen grains get transferred? So who will carry these pollen grains? So for that, we have some special agents who, whose job is only to carry the pollen grains. So this transfer of pollen grains occur with the help of pollinating agents. So those objects which carry the pollen grains from the anther to stigma are known as pollinating agents. Now examples of pollinating agents are wind, water, insects, birds. So you would have, now you can understand why bees get attracted towards the flower. Now looking at the colorful petals of the flowers, bees get attracted. Now when bees reach the flower, what do they do? They carry the pollen grain from that flower and they take it to the stigma of some another flower or to the same flower, right? So not only bees, there are several other insects which you would have seen that keep hovering around the flowers. Also when there is a wind blowing, so the pollen grains might get shifted from the anther to stigma by wind or by water, by insects or birds. So these are some of the pollinating agents. 
right? So this is how the pollen grains will reach the female reproductive part of the flower. So now the pollen grains have reached the stigma. Now the question is, what is the next step? The next step is fertilization. When I say fertilization, I mean the process where the actual fusion is going to take place. That means the pollen grains will combine with the ovum in this step. So how will it combine? So now the pollen grains are in the stigma. So the pollen grains will have to travel from stigma to the ovule because the egg is present, egg or the ovum is present inside the ovule and the ovule is present inside the ovary. So the fusion of pollen and egg is called fertilization. So in this step we will see how this fusion actually takes place. So here I have shown the diagram of only the uh, carpel. So here this is the stigma, this is the style and this is the ovary. Inside the ovary this is the ovule. And inside the ovule we have the female germ cell. So this cell is the female germ cell. And where is the pollen grain? Pollen grain is on the stigma. So the pollen grain is here and the female germ cell is here. So this pollen grain will have to fuse with the female germ cell. So how will it reach there? Now each of this pollen grain contains two male gametes. Now as I said, these pollen grains, actually these are small grains. Inside those grains are, the present, are present the male gametes. Now this pollen grain will actually form a pollen tube. So you see there is a tube-like structure which is passing through the style. This is the style and this orange colored tube is the pollen tube. So this pollen tube will carry it to the ovule. Right? So now the pollen grain, the germ cell, the male germ cell or the male gamete which is present inside the pollen grain will travel through this pollen tube and it will reach the ovary. It will not only the ovary but it will reach the ovule and then here it will reach. So once the male germ cell reaches here, the female germ cell is already there. So the male germ cell and the female germ cell will fuse together and this fusion will give rise to a zygote. What is zygote? Zygote is a single celled organism which is formed by the fusion of the male cell and the female cell. So they will fuse together to form a zygote which will consist of one cell. Now just now I told you that the pollen grain consists of two male gametes. So this is what I talked about one male gamete. So one male gamete will fuse with the egg to form zygote. What happens to the other male gamete? Now the other male gamete will also come here and it will fuse with the secondary nuclei. Here you see some other nuclei. So it will fuse with these secondary nuclei and it will form, form endosperm. What is endosperm now? Endosperm is nothing but the food storage of the zygote. Now this zygote needs food also for its survival, right? So that is provided by the endosperm. So we will discuss that later. So for now you should know that fertilization means the male germ cell will fuse with the egg and it will result in the formation of zygote. So something like this will be formed. So where is the now you see the difference here? So in this case, so here you see this is the zygote and this is the endosperm. So the zygote is formed by the fusion of one male germ cell and the egg cell and endosperm is formed by fusion of the other male germ cell and the secondary nuclei. Right? So now you have inside one zygote and the other endosperm. So this is the fertilization. So that means the first step was pollination where the pollen grain reaches the female reproductive part that is the pollen grain reaches the stigma. The second step is fertilization where the male germ cell present inside the pollen grain will reach till, to, till the ovary and it will fuse with the egg cell to form the zygote. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.